Alright guys and girls, welcome back to another episode of Dad's Toy Garage and today we are setting this car up on our rotisserie. Let's rock this baby to sleep. Got some swivel action in here. I've been spending a lot of time in the shop lately getting it organized. Um, it's, it was very full and hard to work in here, especially with the two cars going on. So let's give a quick look at the shop. So of course we got the two cars, the Snake Charmer and my 73. Back in the back corner there is used to be a bunch of shelves and it would take a, a lot of space. Right here is where I got my metal working shelf. I got my shrinker stretcher, my vise, my metal brake grinder, my bead roller. I got a couple speakers up here for some tunes. Parts wall. I used to be into Mustangs. And so I just have 302 connecting rods on there with the Ford Mustang logos, emblems off the car, space to hang brooms, and I got all my cleaning supplies and paints on this shelf I made out of 2x4s, more greases and stuff. So all the body working hammers, they're just on a wooden rack like this, and the dollies are back there, and stuff like that. So here's my other workbench. And I kind of went with a vintage Toyota race theme. Um, I copied the letters off an old Toyota race car and put the white and yellow, orange, and red stripes on there. Just a couple fun collectibles up there. And then I did a tool wall. All the tools I use the most that aren't power tools, I want them on the wall, displayed, easy to grab. I found when they were in a toolbox, they got really um, disorganized. This way it's a lot easier to keep it organized. So I got the air compressor and the welder, my fridge. These are all mostly parts for the race car. Spare motor and trans, put more parts for the car. For the These are all for the 73, so to kind of keep them organized. The majority of this is now garbage and scrap. I'm not holding on to as much stuff anymore, so that's gonna get taken away. What we're gonna do on this baby here, we're gonna pull it apart and then I need to build a tip over jig for it. I gotta do a little bit of firewall clip mounts. So we'll get into that now. A neat little thing I just discovered. Uh, let me just tell you what I got here. This is the shifter handle, uh, shifter unit off of the W58. This is off uh, the Celica 4 speed. And the neat thing is uh, these bases, you wouldn't know it at first. Um, just by looking at them Where it mounts to the turret, but uh, they share bolt holes. These are the same um, All this stuff it, it's same it fits So what I got here is the W58 is like a short throw shifter. I guess it's shorter um, And the sleek ones longer. I was contemplating welding this handle onto here but now that I know it fits I can have a factory looking looking shifter stick and those of you guys running Celica's um, who want a short throw on your four speed if you're keeping the four speed this should fit right in there um, like this part will be different it would all have to come off but I'm gonna go throw that in the car that is pretty neat um, yeah so I can play around with shifters see what I like for feel wise in the car and how it looks so there is a Celica shifter mounted to W58. Um, we'll get through the gears. So first, second, third, fourth, fifth. And if you want reverse, it's down there. That is pretty exciting. So I do have two shifters to play with now. See what they feel like driving. This one's really flimsy, so it'll probably need a rebuild kit if they make that. Um, but I got three of these shifters, so pick the best and go with that I guess. So I'm moving right along on disassembling this car. I got the doors off, the wiring harness to the uh, firewall is out. Um, everything in the trunk is out, the battery, the charcoal canister, the fuel tank, the wiring harness, lights, a uh, bumper. So that is now stripped down. I'm gonna leave the dashboard in and, and protect it for sandblasting. The last board I pulled out of this car cracked a lot. This one has only one small crack that can be repaired so I want to reuse that. <clears throat> so I get the wiring harness and the steering column has to come out. 
but the rest of it's stripped down and then we'll come to here and we're going to pull the motor and transmission out not sure if I've shown this yet uh, but in a previous video but this is my transmission cross member and we use the W58 uh, Supra the part where the transmission tail shaft mounts to and then I've cut it, I welded it to brace it up and I've welded it to the original one that I've cut apart for the 4 speed I guess now's a good time to show uh, the W58 on the 18R um, W58 is all this, it came out of the Supra, nothing's been changed and then the truck R-series bell housing and the 18R so the brake lines and clutch lines are run that way I got the little clamps from notch head in there <clears throat> and I got one over here and one over here they're just these little black things nice and neat and tidy they look great I was at a good friend of mine uh, he restored a 1967 Chevelle and uh, he built himself an engine stand rotisserie so I had to buy one 2,000 pound um, engine stand. He had the other one and he made some really neat brackets. So let's see what we got here in the back of my Subaru. So here are all the parts. The yellow stuff, that is all engine stand. And then we got all the metal brackets that attach to the car. So we're going to pull all that out and go through that. So got the car on the rotisserie now. Uh, the back half at least. The front we got to do, I got to set up the brackets as I said before. But I'll give you guys a quick peek at how the back's looking here. So the bumper bracket adapters are bolted in place on both sides. This is adjustable up and down on set screws or set bolts, whatever you want to call them. That's adjustable. I've got that set equal per side. Um, so this is ready to go. I'll have to build the adapter now that will run under the car once the front is set up. Um, the front will be a little bit of a different mounting system for the bumper. So once the rotisserie is all set up, I can actually pull the suspension out and uh, I got a little bit of wiring harness left and we're pretty close to a sandblast situation. Or, well, we're not going sandblast on this one. I'm going to be going with uh, media blast. It'll be dustless blasting most likely uh, that they'll do up at the blasted place. And uh, I'm pretty excited to see it come back clean. We won't be doing the quarter panels for blasting in certain areas of the trunk. Probably most likely just a spare tire well. The rest of it just probably needs a scuff before we prime. The roof I have started stripping. Um, I want to prime that before it goes and then the, the blaster can do like in the drip rails, in here, and in all the window channels. Uh, this was kind of a loose situation before, like this one. And when I went over it with the Contour SCT, um, it was it seemed to pull some tension back into there. I guess there was just enough heat to tighten that roof panel up. Like right here, I got a, a spot to deal with. It's a little bit oil can, and I think potentially with a here or here. But um, I'm happy that that roof's getting a little tightened up. And then I'll get him to blast the floor itself. We won't need to go up into the roof or too high into here. We'll do the rockers. Uh, the inner fender apron, all of the engine bay, the cowl, I'll have to mask up the dashboard. And uh, the other thing I want to do yet is uh, he'll be blasting the underside, which is the point of the rotisserie. So we are close, guys. The other engine stand on this side now attached. And uh, the next step will be linking it together once the car is stripped. And all I've done is just drill through the bracket and run bolts and the other thing I did with that to give a stronger bolt I just cut out the old bolt or the old weld nut and drilled it bigger to fit this size and welded on a new nut so that should be a lot stronger there and it will also work with my bumper might have to make those holes a little bit bigger but it'll be good All right. Um, this thing is now wheels off. I don't pull the suspension yet, but we got some rock and roll and happening here, so that's pretty exciting.
Right there, right there it binds on the suspension. So now that we're on the rotisserie, uh, you get a good look at what I've all replaced. So you can see I've replaced this section here off of another car. I've had to build this piece here. Uh, rockers, of course, they've been redone, inner and outer. Um, and kind of like, if you're looking at the rocker here, all the edges on both sides, at least an inch or two in, have been redone. I've built the floorboards here. The, the part that's coated yellow is one of the earlier things I've done. Did the rocker end caps, and this has actually been built up to this point here. Um, the frame rails look good. I've kind of inspected the whole thing. I don't think anything should really blast through. Uh, this is where the accelerator pedal is. I'm guessing right here it's typically wet, and that ends up rusting out. This frame rail has been built from scratch, because mine we could poke through with a pointy, pointy screwdriver. Um, also, that floor pan, just like the other side, is brand new. I made that, and then this whole inner edge. This is kind of what I'm after, so that you can't tell it's been repaired. So you, that has been welded and ground smooth. Same idea here in the back. It's kind of up to this point, it's been replaced from here. So what I want to tackle now is uh, grinding these welds down. I had done that on my, flat on my back, ground that smooth. Not very much fun. This is a lot more uh, productive and easier. Uh, less headaches this way. Um, you can see here on the wheel, the wheel tub where I've welded that seam there, and then. In the back corner, these were rebuilt from scratch, this full of holes. This piece here is out of another car. And then I had to do a couple patches in the frame rails here because there was a hitch and, to, and some rust stuff. Uh, there's a, I've welded on the tow hook from the Miata, the extra one I had. I like it because it used to come up through the bumper here in the back. Alright, I got a little progress done on the chassis here. Uh, got this ground up, cleaned up. There was a little crack in the floor. I, ground, I welded up, ground it, did the floor panel, all nice and cleaned up. The welds in here ground down. So, what I got now is right here where the frame rails overlap, there was a rust spot, and it's kind of in the center of this hole, which now I've drilled out. Uh, and I'm going to drill out another hole so that the water can get out and doesn't sit in there now. But I'm going to weld a plate back over top of it and drill that plate out too. Alright guys, there is the frame rail repaired. Thanks for joining in on another episode of Dad's Toy Garage. And it feels really good to get this thing up on the rotisserie. Uh, it allows me to do... A lot of things now, I can get the uh, car sandblasted, which will be the next step after the final prep work for that. So next time we will probably be getting some primer on this car.